Hi, this is God Shots, and Darlene and I are going to talk about a subject dear to our hearts, letting go. Letting go of whatever it is in life that's holding you back. And the solution is usually, what is it, Darlene? To let go, right? <laughs> to let go. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And letting go is not always easy. No. In fact, sometimes when I'm trying to let go of things, I'm doing it with my claws in it. <laughs> And my, yeah, when I'm, when I'm too busy in my own business and I don't allow the spirit of love to kind of just take me and lift me up and I surrender it and I'm busy trying to be involved in my own problems, they, they, they get worse. They get worse inevitably. That's correct. That's correct. I believe that we have a higher power that is very much in control of everything that is happening. Um, and I used to say happening to me. And now I say happening for me. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Because I have found out that everything that happens, whether it appears good to me or whether it appears bad to me, good and bad, those are not two words I like to use, but it's never really what I think it is. There's always a much higher purpose. Oh my God. So I try, to keep up. That. I try to keep that in, in the forefront of my mind because if I don't, then I think that I'm, I'm going to try to control. And when I try to control things, it just makes the situation horrible. Um, yeah. Yeah. So since I quit trying to control, now I just subtly manipulate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's really no, good. I try not to do too much of that too. So how are you? I haven't seen you for a while. Well, my mother died since we haven't done a show since she died. And I wanted to apologize to everyone, but I needed this time to take care of the estate, selling her house, going through the last days of her life. And it was painful and weird. I never knew the levels I would go through of discovering who she really was, who I really am. I love my mother so much. And it was the longest relationship I've ever had and the deepest one I've ever had. And it was extremely toxic throughout my life, but it also beautiful. And I had this huge forgiveness of my mother in the last year the year before she died, which was so beautiful. I, I mean, I, it was a, it was a great experience. I'll get back to that in a minute. And we also buried my stepfather also on the same day because he died a year earlier of COVID in July, 2020. And we couldn't bury them. We had them cremated. We couldn't bury them until we were vaccinated and we could able, able we were able to have the whole family fly in for the service. But we had it at the veterans, the Los Angeles national cemetery. And I used to drive by that cemetery all the time with my little boy. And when he was little, he would see the rows and rows of white headstones with the veterans. Mm -hmm. And he would say, look, mom, a giant game of dominoes. <laughs> and I said, you are so right. That's what war is, a giant game of dominoes, everything. So he was, um, we all got together there at the service and my relatives flew in, cousins flew in from Texas. And they did the honor guard, the Air Force honor guard, the flag folding, and they played oh, tap. Really Oh, because Chuck was a Korean War veteran. Mm -hmm. And so he and mom were buried together. They are cremated and buried in the Westwood National Cemetery. And it was the most moving time of my life. And it's something so bizarre. I, you know, when your mother passes, you think, you just never know how you're going to handle it. It's like the most, it's the primary relationship in most of our lives. So right. I don't know. A lot's been going on, and I... So let, me, let me ask you this, Lydia, since we are looking this evening on this podcast to talk about letting go, mm -hmm. did, you, did you feel that you had to let go of thoughts and ideas that you had related to your mother as this process was happening also, not only letting go of her as a person, but letting go of concepts and ideas? Ah, oh, that's an interesting question. Thank you. Um, yeah, not just letting go of her as a person. It's so strange how she, she, she shifted in my life so much because as you know, I'm 26 years sober mm -hmm. by the grace of God and surrender. And that process was mainly a lot of abuse in my childhood. And my mother had had such a, such a trying childhood of her own. She was locked in a closet for days on end, and I never, I never knew her whole story. Mm -hmm. And I discovered all these letters after she died. My letters I wrote to her, 
and letters she wrote to me that she didn't send me. One of them was this amazing apology. And I sent it to my sister and she went, whoa, what is this? And she apologized deeply for her cruelty to me. And, and then it said at the top, never sent, 1989. Wow. And I just cried a river. I was, I've been doing a lot of crying and a lot of reflecting and a lot of loving, you know, love her. I have no animosity or anger toward her. I feel that if I hadn't had the mother I had, I wouldn't be as happy as I am now. I wouldn't have found this path. Exactly. I fall up every day. You know, it's like I needed to go through this kind of a fire. We all have something to go through in life. Absolutely. No one gets out unscathed. Whether you have poverty or cancer, or alcoholism, you know, abusive parents or a war torn country or your this struggle in the material world is it's not easy on anyone. I don't know anyone who's had a perfect life and a very easy life. And we're here to ov overcome, to triumph yeah. over tragedy and to figure out the way. And we each have it, to, we have to do it ourselves, each of us alone. We can't really, not alone, but I mean, we can't do it for someone else. That's correct, right. It can either kill you or it can make you stronger. And a lot of people can't, that I've talked to a therapist once who said, a lot of people who have a mother like yours, and my poor mother, God bless her, I don't mean to say she was, Mm -hmm. well, okay, she, she suffered from bipolar disorder and borderline personality disorder, BPD. I just discovered that. Mm -hmm. And there's no cure for that. It's extremely scary. It is scary. And they, they, you know what, the folks that have that diagnosis, that mental health diagnosis, they can't help it. It has come, it has come genetically to them and through their past history. And, you know, like, you know how Lydia, I always bring it into the biblical point of things, right? And it talks in the Bible about generational curses. Mm -hmm. Well, some of that stuff is generational. It starts generations before it gets to you and I, and then we have this and we don't even know what this is, <laughs> you know, and we're, we're dealing with it. But when you have those mental diagnoses, um, you're dealing with somebody that's very hurting on the inside and they are very abusive on the outside. And I've been in those relationships and you kind of really get sucked in because when they're on, there's nobody better in the world. Right. But when they're off, there's nobody that can treat you more poorly either. Hurt and people hurt it, people. Yes. And it gets, very, it gets very confusing. And um, you get very confused because it's almost like come close, go away. Come exactly. Close, it, go it, away. It, and it, you just don't where you're supposed to be. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. You went through this similar thing. I want to ask you about your letting go of someone in your life. And if you want to get specific, but letting go it kind of takes many shapes and forms but first yeah. i just want to say to the audience that darlene comes from a more minister she's a minister and comes from a more religious background i come from a secular background when i discuss god as a god shots because i've studied neuroscience and and i know you have too you, you're a doctor actually but mm -hmm. i come from wanting to discuss god as the fundamental law in the universe of love and the good the good orderly direction for people who don't who are afraid of religion or haven't had a religious background. Right. So we right. come from two different angles, but we come to, to the same home base. Right, and, to the same you know, conclusion, which is interesting. Semantics. We don't have to argue over semantics. It's right. I truly believe in that God is so much, is, is infinite love. Absolutely. And I don't have a religious fundamentalist background at all. I was raised in metaphysics, but I do believe Christ was a great metaphysician, you know, the person, the healer. Mm -hmm. and, the, the resurrection of love within all mankind and you come from a different background but we really do also we're both in recovery so we both have the same loving principle I think absolutely and you know I think the thing that recovery has brought into my life is and and this is really odd for anybody that is listening but even though as a young child it was kind of just like through my grandparents into my parents into me you go to church on Sunday, that's what you do. You have a Bible in your house and that's what you read. I mean, it just kind of through osmosis came to me, right? But the thing that I didn't get was this. You can go 
and you can go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, sing in the choir and sit in that church, right? Mm -hmm. but as Joyce Meyer would say, you can sit in the garage all day long and you're not going to become a car, right? <laughs> So you can sit in church forever and you're not going to become a nice person. It, you know, it's not going to happen. So where I really met God or where I should say God met me was in the rooms. Mm -hmm. And that's where my spiritual journey started. And I think that's how we connect and mesh mm -hmm. because religiosity, this is not about. No, about what you just said is so powerful because I had a tangible, visceral, actual physical I don't know how else to say it. A supernatural experience of this force of love that picked me up out of death's door, from death's door, from near suicide mm -hmm. to the pinnacle of the mountain. I haven't come down since. I've had a, you know, I've eaten chocolate and had a few bad romances, but I've never <laughs> felt as depressed as I was before I had this amazing experience. So I had one of those burning bush light, you know, experiences of God. And it wasn't in a church and it wasn't religious, but it was still, I know what it was. You know what I mean? There's no denying that these, Absolutely. these so called coincidences that I call God shots, that we call God shots. Absolutely. And how we met, that it's like a puzzle piece fitting perfectly. Random things out of the universe somehow find each other. Mm -hmm. like it's Einstein said, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Depending on your definition of God, call God, you know, I don't believe in the anthropomorphic version of the long white bearded man in the sky, right? Right. but love, I believe in love, Absolutely. love inside mankind. Absolutely. And I don't think that, you know, I think the picture that has been depicted of God, I think as humans, we want something tangible. Like we yeah. feel that we need to see something. We need to touch something for it to be real. Right. And the spirit is like the wind. You're not going to see it. You can feel it. You can see its damage or you can see its goodness, but you can't really see it, right? It just is there. And I believe that's how God is. Just this force that's just there. So the long white beard in that picture, I, I just think that those are something that was created that, that are just tangibles for us to see. But I don't think yeah. anybody really knows. Right. I really don't think anybody knows. And even, even in the Bible now, you know, obviously I'm a scholar of the Bible and, and I've read that a lot. And I believe that there is a lot of good, whether you call them actual stories or just fictional stories, it brings a lot of love into, I mean, when you look at the Beatitudes, oh my God, yeah. You look at that and it's just all about love. Um, read the chapter of John. It's nothing but love. And, no. and when you say love, I think it's self selflessness, letting go of selfishness. Absolutely. You can't you know, self-love. The ego is the small, you know, by itself controls everything, wants all the fame and glory. But selflessness is, is the love we're talking about. That's correct. And, you know, Bill Wilson in his office at his home that people can go to Akron and actually go in and see, I snapshotted a picture of a book. It was in his bookshelf because I, the title stunned me and it said the art of selfishness. And I thought, what is that? I snapshotted it. Do you know, to this very day, that book was written back in the thirties. Yeah. This very day, if you try to go and buy that book, it's like $78. And basically what it tells you is to be selfless. Mm -hmm. There's an art to being selfless or selfish. Yeah. And and, you know, in our society today, how does all of this stuff happen that happens? It's selfishness. Exactly. All we the want, we, want, we want it now and we'll do anything we have to do and step on anybody that we need to step on to get it. Exactly. And I have found that when you let go and you quit trying to attain what it is you think you need, right. much better stuff comes in. Right? I love that. And I, had, I wrote a line once saying, if I knew I could be this happy without getting what I thought I wanted, would I have tried so hard to get it and almost killed myself in the process? I mean, I had unbridled ambition to be the queen of the world at one point. I'm going, what, how, how happy, what more do I need? And I right. found a way to, I remember sitting on the bed with my two kids and my two dogs and my husband at the time and going, this is all I ever wanted. Just right here, right now. That's it. Playing with the TV, cuddling with the kids and the dogs, playing, you know, 
puzzling puzzles and crossword puzzles and it was like this is paradise right and you know it's interesting that we're talking like in this vein because things are just coming to me and not too long ago i was setting out on the deck um with a person that that i really appreciate and that i think is a gift in my life i really do and the comment was made you have a lot of stuff and I sat there and I said, I looked around and I said, I do, but you know what? I've learned that stuff can never bring you what another person's love can bring, right? Or what a person, a caring, somebody that's caring for you, what that can do for you spiritually mm -hmm. in your soul. Right. There's no amount of money. There's no amount of stuff that can ever give you that same feeling. That's Does that make sense? Oh God, yes. Yes, because mm -hmm. you can't paste it on. You can only eat only so much sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's right. You can That's right. once you've snowballed toward that chaos. The other side of that is hell. Actually, it's like, how do I stop eating so much and having so much sex and having so many drugs? I mean, it's all. There's no material thing that can fill you up. Right. That's right. One incredible spiritual, and when they say spirit, I mean. It's a thought universe. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, thoughts make the man. This is a thought universe. And wherever you think all day long, you become. In mm -hmm. other words, you're thinking, grumbling, envious, you know, greedy, angry thoughts. That's all you're seeing in your viewfinder. It's so easy to change that to gratitude for what you do have. Absolutely. And the quickest way to pray is gratitude, to start. What That's do right. I have to be grateful for? Count your blessings. You know, Absolutely. My eyesight, I can see today. I have my eyesight. I know a friend who doesn't have hers. You but, know, what the smallest things that we don't think of. And, you know, that brings up an interesting point. When I first started my journey 17 years ago, mm -hmm. and I was not happy. I felt like everything in my life that I knew was changing. And I was hanging. Do you talk about not wanting to let go? <laughs> There was no way I wanted to let go of any of it. I, I had my favorite bars. I had my favorite stuff. And, and I just remember being really, really miserable. And I was sitting in this meeting and I just, the, the, the meet it was, it was November. So the topic was gratitude. And I just thought, eh, eh. one more time I had to talk about gratitude. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> and so anyway, I, um, as this guy was leaving and he had like 18 or 20 years sober, and he's like, you just need to be grateful. And I turned around and I said, I don't have anything to be grateful for. Oh my, man. But anyway, I said, I don't have anything to be grateful for. And he just looked at me, he goes, you're sucking air, aren't you? <laughs> and he walked out and I thought, oh, I, he's goofy, you know? But now that I look back on it, I'm like, we are, we're breathing without a trach. We're breathing. We're breathing without oxygen. Oh I mean, God. it's a gift. It's a it gift. really is. Most of the time, I feel really good. And I haven't had a drink in 26 years. Do you, that, first of all, I was a radioactive drunk. I can't <laughs> believe that. And some things that just horrible things I was doing in the past. But, right? I, I do feel like I've been remade and given. It's just bizarre that I'm not that I'm able to walk by a, a bar. I go to bars sometimes and actually write my. I go into sports bars and write because I don't know why. Because I'm meeting someone for you know, for lunch there or something, but I don't have that craving anymore. Thank God. Right. Um, exactly. I wouldn't say to do that if you're trying to stay sober and you're newly sober, but it's a yeah. to let go of the, um, the tight fist of control of like, right. oh, white knuckling everything. The spiritual way is the easier, softer way. It sure is. And, and you know what, and it, you know what, once it's, it's really interesting, but once I've now had that feeling to know that peace and contentment and joy and happiness that surpasses all understanding for no reason. I don't ever want to go back. Never. Never. Yeah. Never want to go back because I even look at this situation with you and I, and I'm like, who would have thought like <laughs> three years ago that this would even be happening? You know, you are one and of the best things that ever happened to me you're one of the greatest gifts of my life the past couple of years i'm like where did this woman come from you know <laughs> it's just a god shot a true god shot we both created a thing a, a website called god shots and i started doing this years ago and so did you and we thought what a cool word god shots and i'm trying to explain that it's this uncanny coincidence 
a synchronicity and you have a website and then we have this little legal conflict and my lawyer writes her a letter saying you're not allowed <laughs> to use the word god shocks lydia trademarked miss cornell trademarked it and then she calls me and we become partners and best friends after getting through that initial hurdle of see everything bad turns into something good yeah, but you know the funniest story I remember, and I just have to share this with our viewers because you know what? With God, all things are possible. That's true. And and he has this plan that is just so amazing that if you just go with it, because okay, let me let me try to break this down for our listeners. So 17 years ago, I should say 18 years ago, when I was actively out there, this couldn't have been possible because you were already sober and I wasn't in that realm. Right. So then when he puts me in this realm, the funniest thing I remember is we met in January and you okay. <laughs> but we met in January and then in February, the Oscars were on. And I remember laying in bed at 11 o'clock at night and this Eastern Standard Time, because that's me getting a phone call from Lydia. And she's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, I'm in bed. It's 11 o'clock at night, Eastern Standard Time. I'm watching the Oscars. And you said, I'm at the Oscars. And I was, <laughs> I was like, what's happening to me? <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was the best moment. I was like, this is so cool. Oh my God. That was so cool. And I was just like, <laughs> that's right. That's I don't right. know. But I thought I, if this is, if this is my magic carpet ride, I don't want to get off. It's oh, that's okay. Right. That's <laughs> I can't believe 17 years ago. That's right. Because yeah. you're 17 years sober. Yeah. We wouldn't have known each other. We wouldn't have known. It's mm -hmm. all meant, everything's meant to be. That's why I and think every mistake I ever made. But you know what? I had to go through that, which I did not want to go through to get to this that I do want to be in. Me right. Too. And, you know, as you and I know, Lydia, this just keeps marching closer towards, um, bigger things that we want to share with a larger audience and do it through different modalities like TV and things to get it out there to a lot of people. Because, you know, I, I know for sure that I'm not unique in any, any stretch of the imagination. I am the most down to earth, normal, yeah. crazy family person that, that most of the time common sense might elude me sometimes. <laughs> Me too. You know, I, and it, it just works. And so, yeah, this is really an awesome opportunity. See, what's so cool about you, you have a, a, such a great spirit and you're so, here's what I think the gift gives me, the, the, the surrender, the daily surrender and the daily reprieve of turning my life over. When I say let go, I mean let go and let God. And when I say God, I'm, I don't have to keep explaining what I mean by God. But if you just stop worrying so much and holding on to your problems and counting all the negative things happening and trying to fix things on your own. Right. And you really just so show me the way and act as if there's a power greater than yourself that loves you. Believe me, believe me, try it. There's nothing worse than contempt prior to investigation. That Herbert Spencer quote in the big book. That's right. Nothing will keep a man in everlasting ignorance so much as contempt prior to investigation. And I have several people who every day they fight me on this. They go, why do you talk about God so much? And I, I keep saying, use a different word. Use love. Use, they, they still don't get. And I'm angry too at them. I mean, why am I angry at them? To each his own, you know, whatever you want to call it. I feel sad that they don't have the benefit of this wonderful thing I have, which is surrender on a daily basis. My depression is gone. I had suicidal depression. I don't ever go there anymore because I'm lifted up by a daily reprieve because I actually pray. I actually ask the universe to keep me sober today, happy, joyous, and free, and mainly to help others, to help my son and to help family members and help you and help this country. And right. I'm just like saying, I don't know how to do it by myself. I need help. It's that, it's that surrender. I need help mm -hmm. raising the white flag. Yes, yeah. I agree with that. And I think when we let go of our agendas, you know, oh, wow. then the power has the opportunity then to fill that void. 
That's right. Because if we hang on to what we think is best for us, oh, and believe me, for anybody listening, I'm the queen. <laughs> I'm hanging on to the stuff that I should have let go a long time ago. But, you know, I, I just think I can fix it. I can change it. I can make it be better. I can, I can help you. I'm the fixer. I'm going to fix you. Oh my Nobody God. needs fixed. Nobody needs fixed. I have the Coldplay song, Fix You. You should hear that song. We should play it right now. What is it? The Coldplay, the song, oh. Fix You. Yeah. Oh my God. You are so right. You just, you just said to me, let go of your agenda. And here I am. I've been trying so hard to fit a square peg into a round hole for years. <laughs> become this famous writer. And, and last week I had an audition for a movie. And I'm like, damn it, I can't stand auditions. And yet... All these other actors are going, I'd give anything to have an audition. I am looking a gift horse in the mouth. Right. I'm like tortured through the audition. But at the end, when I let go, in the minute, middle of the whole day of torture, self-torture, I just said, oh, well, I'm going to let go. I let go. Thanks, God. Help me just get through this. I did the best take ever, and it was perfect. It was like, even my agent said, oh, my God, this is fantastic. So nice. it's when I let go of my at my agonizing self will run riot or wanting things my way or thinking I have to be perfect. And I was burdened with a mother who really did say to me every day, young women are not valuable unless they're beautiful and perfect in every hair in place. And I was a creative child. I wanted to be an inventor or an astronaut or Walt Disney. I wanted to be, and I didn't know you had to be pretty to get ahead in the world. So I was born in the wrong time in a way. But ever since then, it's been like, Oh, I forgot. I got to be perfect. And I'm ready to let go of that right now. That is not serving me anymore. You know, right. there was because a woman perfect. No, yeah. no human being is perfect. No human being is perfect. No. And, and we, we like, I like flawed people. I don't like perfect people. I like the vulnerability in somebody. That's, that's absolutely true. Tell me that's about true. your letting go, your most recent letting go. Can you talk about it in a way? Um, you know, I think that there, there was something I had to let go of and you know what? It ended up that I didn't even do it. I, I really think that life happens on life's terms in life's time. Right. Yeah. And so I tried to work for a couple years on a situation that I just, I, I just was trying to hang on to. And I thought, you know, what should I do? How do I do this? What do I do? And nothing ever seemed to fit. Like you were talking about the square peg in the round hole, square peg in the round hole. And then I'm going to tell you what, it was in the blink of an eye, bam, God took everything and just turned it around. I mean, literally, literally moved people brought people in. I know. I know. I mean, and it hasn't stopped. It's, it's been a miracle. It's it been just, a miracle. It just, it's a miracle. And it just keeps rolling to the point of, and I know you know this, but I'll share it with our viewers. Um, you know, Lydia and I have talked a couple of times about the fact that, you know, I'm from the East coast. She's from the West coast. And to make this really gel and really work, we're going to have to spend some time together, which most logically would be on the West coast. Well, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, like I have a family, I have a house, how would this work? I'm hanging on to this house. And, and all of a sudden, the Friday before the 4th of July, two people show up on my doorstep and they're like, we're going to buy your house. <laughs> so weird. And I had, and here's the funny part, folks. I mean, my prayers had been to God, like, you know, digging my feet into the dirt. Like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to go. We're going to have to figure this out, right? Yeah. And I said, and I, this was, this is exactly what I said, call it a prayer, call it a wish, call it whatever. I just said, look, if you're moving me someplace, then you're literally going to have to bring the people to my front door because I'm not putting this house up for sale. <laughs> so so what does he do? He brings the people to my door and I actually am sitting here now. And I just kept saying to them, but my house isn't for sale, <laughs> it was like, but I guess it might be. And plus, you live in a. No, by the way, Darlene lives in a small town in a place where it doesn't seem like a center of, you know, home buyers that would be rushing there at all. 
They happen yeah. to be wanting to live in that exact street because their sister lives down the street. That's 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 and very they knew, and they knew me apparently. But that's yeah. really, the whole thing's um odd. Well, it's very odd. And then what was what was even more odd? odd. If it's odd, she, it's God. <laughs> when she was sitting at my table and we were just talking, and she said something about why well, I, I can't believe that you live in Weirton. And I'm like, I'm born and raised. I mean, I've never lived any place else. I don't know any place else. And she just was like, yeah, yeah, you should be in Hollywood. <laughs> I was like, of all the places in the world, why? I don't know this woman. Why did you? She said that out of the blue? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so I'm just like, okay, this is, okay, you know. And just as I was closing the door, the two people walking out of my house, wow. you called me. And you're like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, this is surreal. Wow. So all I can say to the listeners is, you know, for the times that I get frightened and the times that I don't want to let go, I try to pull back into these memories of actually it's fun. Like I wake up every day and I'm like, okay, what's new? What's next? You know, you just said it. Okay. I got to tell you the reason I'm so happy most, I say that right now and I wasn't that happy yesterday for two minutes, but because, <laughs> of the joy, because it's fun. Life is supposed to be fun. We didn't know that. Right. I knew that. And I talked to an astrophysicist whom I'm working with on a project whom I want you to meet. And he, I said to him once, why are you involved in, spa, in space research and in NASA? He works at NASA. He goes, because it's fun. It, if I wasn't having fun, I wouldn't do this physics, which seems oh. difficult to most people. But if you're not, you know, I never even thought of the concept of having fun with it, that life is supposed to be fun. And Absolutely. this part of life, seeking the constant, not just glimmers of hope, but actual transformative ideas that shift my my body, my reality, my health. I've had, and I call them, you can call them miracles, but I think they're supremely natural events. Because when you start thinking the right way, they're natural. It's natural to feel good. It's not natural to not feel good. It's natural to have things work out. It's unnatural when they don't work out. We have to shift our paradigm. We've been all looking at the, we've been studying diseases rather than studying health. And mm -hmm. if you want to call God the health, Okay, I know some people who call it the great goodness, but there is a great goodness that kind of keeps everything, all these balls in the air. And it's not worry and fear. It's the opposite of worry and fear. Right. You know, and you know, you think about Norman Vincent Peale. I love him. A long time ago. Remember he wrote the book, what was it? Power Think Positive. Think and Grow Rich. What is it? Think and Grow Rich. Well, that might have been one of his books, but he also wrote about the power of positive thinking. Yes. yes. And then you have somebody like Wayne Dyer. Yeah. That oh, did so him. much work in that area. I mean, there are so many people out there that have written positive books. Joyce Meyer has a book out, um, The Battlefield of the Mind. You yeah. are what you think. And the man goes where the man will follow the mind. You know, we've got exactly. to keep our minds positive. And I think that as talking about letting go, um, sometimes we just have to get into a spot where we realize that it's not about us. Think and Grow Rich is Napoleon, oh, you can't even see my phone, is Napoleon okay. Hill. Okay. Napoleon Hill. Okay, so well, what thank you said, Wayne Dyer, we, we've got to take a break now and we're going to come back and talk about a little bit more about this subject. But Wayne Dyer is also one of the most magnificent teachers. And you're mm -hmm. right, not just positive thinking. And so is Joyce Meyer. And so is yes. Hill and Emmett Fox. Yes. And Wilson. Love all those people. But it's been great talking with you. And um, it's great talking. We're going to take a break and come back and do another episode. Yes. We're okay. going to have part two of Letting Go right after this break. Thank you. Stay tuned. <laughs>